A good Wednesday evening to you. Welcome to the Oasis service here at Valley Assembly of God. I'm Pastor Jones, and it's a joy and a delight to come to wherever you're at watching this YouTube, endeavoring and desiring to be a blessing and a help and a strength to you. We have been in a series asking questions that need to be answered by every single one of us as individuals and using the book of Psalms to answer them. And tonight, we're going to ask the question, so why should I be thankful? Is there any reason? We're going to be in Psalms 92, and I'm going to read that in just a moment while you're taking your Bibles in hand and turning to this 92nd Psalm. Let me just remind you that Sunday morning we're here at 9 o'clock for our Bible study hour. That's for all ages. We'd love to have you be with us. 10 o'clock is morning worship. Sunday evening, 6 o'clock, uh, worship the Word. Royal Rangers and Girls Ministries are going on. Monday, prayer meeting at 12 noon right here in the sanctuary. And then, of course, we're right back here to our Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock. We have our youth group, children's ministries going on, and we would love to have you join with us. Psalms 92. The Bible said it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad though the, through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thy enemies, O Lord, for lo, thy enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see my desire on my enemies. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish, hallelujah, like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still, or they shall still bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. Tonight and next week, we are going to endeavor to answer the question, so why should I be thankful? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray your blessing upon your word tonight. May it challenge us, stir us, and God, if need be, convict us. I pray, anoint not only the word, but your messenger and speak into the hearts and lives of everyone under the sound of this preacher's voice. And God, we just give you the glory for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In this study, we want to learn that there are many, many reasons to be grateful to God. On any given day, we can look around and find things from which we don't feel particularly grateful for. That's all of us. Sometimes life deals to us difficulty in the course of the way. But on that same day, if we will, we can find way more reasons to be thankful than not. And I want to say this to you, and I want, I want it to sink in. Gratitude, my friends, is a discipline. It's something that we have to develop. It's something that we have to practice. It's something that we need to be conscious of. It is a discipline. And of course, I understand we're not living in a disciplined day and hour, but you and I as believers need to be disciplined individuals, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's developed, my friends, by intentionally looking up 
looking around and looking within. That's how we develop and cultivate a grateful spirit. In The Haunted Man, Charles Dickens tells of a chemist troubled with unhappy memories. We all have them, don't we? A phantom offers the haunted man the opportunity to have his memory destroyed. He accepts the offer and not only loses his memory, but he gains the power to strip others of their memories as well. The gift was a big disappointment, to say the least. The man's misery was so great that he asked the phantom to come back. And the tale concludes with the man's grateful and earnest prayer. This is what Dickens penned. Lord, keep my memory green. Keep my memory green. Memory, my friends, is a word which is both bitter and sweet. It is a strong argument for the soul and for life and for the life hereafter. Someone said memory is the well-stored library of the mind. Memory makes the joys of childhood live again. Isn't it a wonder what God has given us? You can sit back, close your eyes, and go back in time to your childhood, to the places you swam, the places you fished, the places you played baseball, the places you took a walk, and, and then down through time as you aged and graduated from school and were married and started your family and worked at this job and that job, all those memories are stored in your mind. Memory in the night makes past days appear all over again, like you're reliving them. Memory restores the blessedness that once we knew when we saw the Lord. And I love this definition best. Memory is the angel with the backward look. Memory, my friends, is the absolute key to gratitude. We've got to remember. We absolutely have to remember if we're going to be the grateful people God has intended you and I to be. Amnesia literally means without any memory. We might wish we had amnesia about some things, but it would be very difficult for us to be grateful people if we could not remember what God has done for us. How he forgave us, how he washed our sins away, how he turned our life around. Sure, there's some unpleasant memories, but to think the miracle that God's worked in us by his saving grace, that's worth all the memories that we have contained within our heart and mind. In Psalms 92 and 1, it says this, It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to his name. O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Morning and night, we're thankful, we're grateful. It's a good thing, the psalmist says, to give thanks and to sing praises. You, Lord, have made me glad through your work, I will triumph in the works of your hands. Verse 4. Verse 5 says this. O Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. Verse 8, he says, but you, Lord, are on high forevermore. Giving thanks, first of all, causes you and I to look upward. To set our eyes upon God. Thanksgiving is what we offer God for what he has given us. In Psalms 107, 21 and 22, it says this, All oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. The Apostle Paul went through many difficult things. His life was anything but easy in the course of the path that he took. Yet, he remained grateful. He remained a man full of thanksgiving, and he focused on God. That's what made it possible. He didn't focus on the imprisonments and the 
carried nine tails that tore open his back, the stoning, the shipwreck, the bite from the serpent that came out of the fire. Paul focused on God. He wrote to the Ephesians, giving thanks always for all things to God, Ephesians 5.20. He wrote to the Colossians and said, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Doing what? Giving thanks. Giving thanks to the God the Father through him, Colossians 3.17. To the Thessalonians, he said in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 2, we give thanks to God always for you. Not sometimes, not just when the sun's out and things are going good, all the time. Good, bad, ugly times. To the young Timothy, he wrote in 1 Timothy 1.12, I thank Jesus, Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me. He wrote to Philemon 1 and 4, I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers. You know how Paul was able to do that? He put his focus where it needed to be. He looked up. Stop looking at yourself. Stop looking at your problems. Stop looking at the predicaments of life. Stop looking at society. Set your eyes upon God, and it will cultivate within you a thankful spirit. We need that today. There's so much whine and gripe and complaining. Boy, it's a breath of fresh air when you come across somebody that's giving God thanks. Giving God thanks is good also because it causes us to look around. Look around you. In addition to his relationship with God, Paul had relationships with people. I have people that are part of my inner circle in life that bless me by words of encouragement, by the ability to share with them things that I can only share with people that close. And it fills my life with gratefulness for them and for their kindness to me. He couldn't close a letter, Paul, without naming all the people with him and all the people at the letter's destination. He talks about them with fondness. He mentions their names and usually says something about them. He's always thanking God for people. When was the last time you thanked God for the people in your life? Maybe you need to thank God for a father who met every possible need in your life as you were growing up. Maybe you need to thank God for a mother who was there lovingly guiding you, directing you, instructing you, blessing you, keeping you safe, standing up for you. How long ago has it been since you thanked a father or a mother or their undeniable hand that's been in your life to rescue you from some real dire predicaments? How about a teacher? I remember in junior high, I had a teacher that I uh, got to really love and like immensely. He instructed me about weightlifting, which I was interested in at that time. And every so often I would go over after school and meet him in his classroom and have a, a time of fellowship with him. I appreciated him and I thanked him and I told him I thanked him. How about uh, fellow workers? I know in church, I've got those that labor with me. I can't do all the work. Thank God for volunteerism, for people that will stand up and be counted for God. Every year I try to send out a note to thank them individually for their faithfulness, for their work, for their kindness, and, and for their help in the ministry. How long has it been since you thanked your preacher? And I'm not just trying to solicit thanks from those under the sound of my voice on this YouTube, but I'm talking about those of you that go to other churches. When was the last time that you sent your pastor a note or you stopped him in the hallway and just said, thank you for your good ministry? Friends, it, it, it blesses beyond imagination. 
This is the way Paul was. He was always thankful for all men. Paul says we're to give thanks to God for our friends and for our loved ones. He, he does that often in the epistles. In Acts 28 and 15, he says, And from there, when the brethren heard about us, they came to meet us as far as Appy Forum and three ends. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. When he seen them, he thanked God and he took courage in those people. Every time Paul was next to somebody whom God sent to minister to him, he was filled with gratitude. Romans 6 and 17, he writes, But God be thanked that through you were, though you were, though, excuse me, thank God that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart. All of his letters seem to be salted with gratitude for relationships. Aren't you thankful for the people that God has brought across your path in life? I think back in my life, there were several superintendents, Brother Ivor Frick, uh, the Secretary of Treasurer, Brother Fred Smaltchuk, our General Superintendent, Brother Thomas Trask, a dear preacher friend in Honolulu, Hawaii, Brother Howard Hedrick, uh, my dear friends, the uh, Ron and Connie House out there in California. These people were not brought into my life by accident. And every one of them, in some way, some fashion, have been a blessing to me. A dear brother that almost calls me every week, Brother Dan Hess, one of our home missionaries. He's a blessing. God brings these people across our path to be a blessing to us and to encourage us at times when we're having trouble being encouraged. Let's be grateful for these relationships. They've been made real to us by the hand of God. I don't think God ever intended for us to be loners. I remember as a kid watching the program, The Lone Ranger. Let me tell you something. It made for a good storyline and for a, a good program to watch as a kid. But it's not a good lifestyle. Wherever people tell me what God is doing, they speak of relationships. And friends, that's why it's so important that we need to get back to church. It's more than just watching a YouTube. As much as I, I love doing this and providing this ministry, if it is all possible for you to get into a good church, if it is all possible for you to get back to your church, get there because relationships are important. Because when one is down, the others are there to pick them up. When we're down, others are there to pick us up. We speak encouragement into one another. We sing together. We worship together. We pray together. It's all about relationships. They've discovered that growth in the spiritual realm is a lot easier when you grow together with one another and with another person who helps and encourages you. I don't think you can undersell, underrate the importance of friendship. I talked to a dear friend of mine the other day that grew up with me as a kid, who I had the privilege of winning to God and went on later to be a Presbyterian minister for over 40 years. And every so often we talk. And he always endeavors to be an encouragement to me and I likewise to him. If you have someone you're close to, somebody who ministers to you, put an arm around that individual on occasion that, that stands at your side and cries with you and laughs with you. My friends, that relationship is very, very important. It's a thing that ought to give you opportunity right now to raise your hands and give thanks and gratitude to God for bringing that person across the path of your life. Let me end with this thought this evening. Relationships are vital to your individual growth, your individual maturity as a believer. When you look around, you can't help but to be thankful for friendship. We're going to pick this up next week. You'll not want to miss it. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time.
we've enjoyed together. And thank you, God, for laying the groundwork here, for making us realize how important thanksgiving and gratitude is from our lives back to you. I pray, Father, that you will cultivate that within us and that we would not be so full of negativity, of gripe and complaint, but God be more thankful. Father, I pray, prepare our hearts as we make our way through the remainder of this week. Lay the groundwork, I pray, for a great Sunday. And Father, into your safe hands, we commend ourselves tonight and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I hope from this day forward, gratitude and thanksgiving are going to earmark your life and your very behavior. God bless you until I see you again. Amen.